Go time. It's the point of no return when your pizza passes through the mouth of the oven. You hope you've done it all right up to that point so that you can have an amazing pizza. I'm gonna break down the cooking process and show you how your prep work pays off in the oven. Let's make some pizza. Before we get into what's going on in the oven, we need to take stock of where we are. So yesterday evening, I mixed and kneaded the ingredients. I set it aside to rise under these moist towels. And we're gonna go over the ingredients one at a time, what's in the ingredients and what role they play. I'm gonna do this pretty quickly. We start with the water, then we add the salt, then we add the yeast, then we add the flour. The flour is the most complex of the ingredients because it's an organic substance and it contains a lot of different molecules and chemicals that are important for making the pizza. The two main molecules that we're interested in are the ones that form that gluten. Before there's gluten, there's glutenin and there's gliadin. And they require the addition of water and the application of mechanical pressure, so either kneading or mixing if you're using a dough mixer, to combine those ingredients into a mesh that is gluten. The gliadin is a very viscous material. In other words, it kind of stretches very easily, etc., but it doesn't regain its shape. The glutenin is the elastic part of that formula. And when you combine the two, you get a viscoelastic substance, which is your pizza dough, which is gonna form your crust. It keeps its shape appropriately, but is also very stretchable, and that allows you to form a circular disc and to shape it and kind of stretch it as you need it. So it returns to its original shape as much as is needed, but really what you're doing is you're shaping it into this new shape, which is a circular disc. Let's go over the roles of the other ingredients, starting with the water. Water is part of the chemical process of forming the gluten, the glidin and the glutenin, and the water together with the application of mechanical pressure are what are needed to embed the glidin inside the glutenin to form the gluten. The salt helps the yeast do its job, but the salt also helps with the browning process and has a flavor component, obviously. The yeast eats the sugars that are in the flour and creates both carbon dioxide and ethyl alcohol, which then blow up to form the foam, the nice puffy crust of the pizza. We've taken the dough and cut it into separate dough balls. And now all those chemicals are gonna have their reactions and they're gonna continue to grow. The yeast at this point is really producing a lot of enzymes that are gonna help with the pizza as it cooks in the oven. But right now you can already see that the yeast has started creating quite a bit of air. I apologize for skipping around just a bit. We're putting the sauce and the toppings on top of the pizza at this point. I actually am putting tomatoes almost directly on the pizza. There's no cooked sauce of any kind. That would create problems for us because you don't want anything pre-cooked to be recooked once it gets in the oven. I'm applying the different cheeses and I'm doing this in a specific order, which means I'm gonna put the basil on top before I put the mozzarella cheese on because the mozzarella cheese is going to protect the basil as it cooks at the very high temperatures in the oven. The last part of this process will be to apply the olive oil. The olive oil and the cheese and the basil and the tomatoes are going to combine together in a process called amalgamation, which only occurs at very high temperature. The ingredients on top of the pizza also serve a very important role for the cooking. You'll notice that the crust around the outside of the pizza cooks very differently than the center of the pizza, and that's because the center is covered with the toppings. So how many toppings you have, how much water content you have in the toppings on the pizza is really important. So if you're varying your recipe from the traditional margarita, you have to take that into account. To illustrate the point of how important the toppings are, 
take a look at this pizza, which was left in the oven. The poor thing was orphaned. We forgot about it and forgot to pull it out because we were busy making the video. And you can see that the crust is just incredibly burnt. The inside of the pizza, not so much. Now look at the bottom. You see that it's cooked. It's definitely overcooked on the bottom, but this is still edible pizza or at least edible crust. It's amazing to me how important and how resistant to the very high extreme temperatures of the oven, the toppings and the sauce are. This also illustrates another really important principle. Because this pizza was sitting at the same spot on the oven floor, despite the fact that the oven floor started at 400 degrees Celsius, actually a little bit higher in the case of this pizza, and yet it didn't burn. Why didn't it burn? Because the dough and the toppings in the sauce protected each other from the extreme heat even coming up from the floor of the pizza and the extreme heat coming from the top of the oven. Enough of that foolishness. Let's get this pizza in the oven where it belongs. This pizza has just gone from the relative comfort of the surrounding air to the high incendiary temperatures inside of the oven. We're talking about somewhere between 30 degrees Celsius up to 400 to 450 degrees Celsius inside the oven, including the floor of the oven. Notice how quickly the external rim of the pizza or the crust is blowing up. The yeast is going berserk up to 50 degrees Celsius. Water is evaporating and you can see some of that steam coming off the pizza and these closed chamber bubbles from the ethanol and the carbon dioxide that are produced by the action of the yeast are really expanding at this really, really rapid rate. This is slowed down to about 10% speed. And so in the matter of just a few seconds, you can see how quickly that's blowing up. This portion of the process is called oven rise. We've reached the oven spring phase when the temperature of the pizza itself, the dough, is getting above the 50 degrees Celsius mark. The yeast dies, it stops creating enzymes. The enzymes, however, are breaking down starches into sugar. Water keeps evaporating, coming out of its trap in the flour itself, and is making its way into these closed cell bubbles. The CO2, the ethanol, and the other liquids and gases trapped in the walls of the bubble evaporate and they heat up and they enter into the bubbles themselves. Of course, this process takes place at the side closest to the fire first. As we turn the pizza, you'll notice that the side closer to the fire now starts springing up. When that stops springing up, we've moved on to the next phase. Now the internal temperature of the pizza and the dough is reaching the 50 to 60 degree mark. The remaining starches are actually starting to gelatinize and they're ganging up with the proteins, breaking the bubble walls open. And as they do, vapor from the water that's in the crust rushes into the open cells and keeps the pizza from collapsing. In the last seconds of the oven spring, the internal temperature is now somewhere between 65 and 70 degrees Celsius, and the dough is losing its flexibility and it becomes stiff. And this stiffness is actually critical for keeping that crust light and airy by giving it some structure. As the dough stops puffing up, we've moved on to the baking process. The internal temperature of the pizza now is between 95 degrees Celsius and 97 degrees Celsius. It will not get to 100 degrees Celsius internally because the water vapor that is escaping keeps the internal temperature below 100 degrees Celsius. The center starts to cook differently than the outside. The oven floor temperature is critical to making that pizza crunchy. And so underneath, the pizza has consumed the heat from the oven floor directly underneath it. 
Heat from the fire and the thermal mass of the oven, however, continues to rain down on this pizza. And because the crust has started to dry on the outside, we're starting to get that browning effect, which is what we want and makes our dough soft and crunchy. The perfect pizza. This water passing out of the pizza that keeps the crust relatively cool is called the Maillard reaction. Notice the amount of steam that continues to escape from the pizza as we let it sit for just a second to allow the crust to firm up and give it that crunchiness on the outside while in the inside it's still very soft. Ready, Junka? Yeah. out and maybe here we can show the side. Yeah. Okay. The side so you can see the hole in the dough. Pick up one that has Pick to be there. And then put the side so I can see. Now that you know how oven rise, oven spring, and baking work, you should have a better understanding of how your recipe, dough making, topping, and dough forming affect the cooking of the pizza. Being cognizant of what is coming up when you are performing those steps should help you make better choices. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and give us some comments. We'd love to hear from you.